Welcome to Matters Financial and Geopolitical from a Frontier. Thank you for stopping by. Kasta um, Samea, the South African runner, said, I'm still here, I'm still alive, I'm still standing. I'll never stop fighting. And the converse of that is Sun Tzu, the supreme art of war is to subdue the enemy without fighting and be extremely subtle even to the point of formlessness, be extremely mysterious even to the point of soundlessness, thereby you can be the director of the opponent's fate. And then I like this, Epictetus, just keep in mind, the more we value things outside our control, the less control we have. Really interesting article in The Sun, how a single thousand-year-old coin could change the history of an entire continent and prove seafarers reached Australia hundreds of years before Captain Cook. The copper coins are from Kilwa, an ancient trading port that is now in Tanzania. The coin was discovered on the remote Elko Island off the coast of Australia and home to just over 2,000 people. The archaeologist who found the ancient coin on the beach on the island of Elko says the discovery could change history. According to experts, it's a dead ringer for a Kilwa coin from an ancient trading city in what is now Tanzania, some 6,000 kilometers away. The, the discovery of the coin on the remote island could mean that the first non-Aboriginals to set foot in Australia were not Europeans, but Africans from Kilwa. Alternatively, it could have been the Portuguese who raided Kilwa in 1505, with experts saying they may have left the coin behind on their travels through Southeast Asia. Portuguese seafarers were in East Timor in 1515 and could potentially have reached the Australian mainland. Mike Hermes, an archaeologist who discovered the coin, said the Portuguese were in Timor in 1515. To think they didn't go three more days east with the monsoon wind is ludicrous. And I take you now to an interview I did with a gentleman called M.G. Vasanji, who's a fantastic writer, and I've enjoyed his books a great deal. Very powerful, a little mystical, at times even dark. Sometimes it's hard to remember, he said, of Kilwa. I think I had the town of Kilwa in mind, having read about it. It has a certain romance to it, being ancient. It's one of the oldest urban settlements in sub-Saharan Africa. The Arab traveler Ibn Battuta mentions it in the 14th century. The English poet John Milton mentions it. It's older than Delhi. Its descriptions in old Portuguese texts are fantastic. Then there was the mystique of magic, which is very strong in Tanzania. From his book and an interview I did with him at the Norfolk, the past is a dangerous business, warned Aki Limali. It is best to keep it buried. And on this point of the monsoon wind, Professor Felipe Fernandez Amesto explains the precocity of the Indian Ocean as a zone of long-range navigation and cultural exchange is one of the glaring facts of history made possible by the reversible escalator of the monsoon. What it meant is the wind blew you all the way from India and maybe even as far as, uh, uh, you know, all the way from wherever the Portuguese actually got to, all the way down to Mozambique. Then you'd wait and then the wind would turn around and take you all the way back again. Camoish, who actually followed that route from Portugal all the way down past the Cape of Good Hope and all the way to Macau, Time changes and our desires change. What we believe, even what we are, is ever changing. The world is change, which forever takes on new qualities. This is an interview with Maria Jao Lopo de Cavallo about Luis de Camões and her book, which followed his 16th century journey from Portugal to Macau. Fantastic and fascinating story.